ready to get back in our Father's Word, book of Revelation, regardless of what language you translate it into, it always means the uncovering or the unveiling, meaning to make God's plan known. Known to the point where a child can understand. And we come to this place where he's explaining the coming of the false Christ. And not only that, he's going to give us his name in both the Hebrew and the Greek tongue here in a few minutes. And so that there can be no error. He told us in Mark 13, for the elect's sake, he had shortened the time. You're going to find out in this ninth chapter of Revelation, he shortened that time to a five-month period. And not only that, when you use the knowledge that you have concerning the locust, you know it is their particular term from May through September, five months period. Of course, you are not to be deceived. You are a watchman, and you never know when, when the thief is coming, so you watch. But he gives us this to let us know. Now, he has released Satan, you might say, from the pit, the abyss. That means he's turned loose on the earth. That's why these are called woe, woe trumps. And you have the knowledge here to know he can't bother God's elect. Satan is given strict orders by God himself. You can go down there, but you cannot bother those that have the seal of God in their forehead. Now, I hope you have all seven of them, because we taught them well, seven seals. And when you seal that knowledge in your mind, he can't touch you. By what? By order of Almighty God in verse 4 of chapter 9, whereby he said, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Those you can bother, but how far can they go with it? Well, let's find out. A word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name. Chapter 9, the great book of Revelation, the uncovering, verse 5, and it reads, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Now, I explained in the last lecture how a scorpion striketh a man, or, or uh, his victim. It turns his backbone to mush. They're tormented for the simple reason if they do not have the seal of God in their forehead, which means they don't have the Word of God in their mind. They don't know what's going on. And they probably, most of them, will think this is Christ because He is supernatural. And He's able to perform miracles, as we'll discover in chapter 13, in their sight. I mean marvelous things. And people unlearned are not equipped with that. Verse 6 to continue. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. You're in that transition of changing from flesh into spiritual bodies. And many of them that have been pew potatoes. That means sitting in a church pew all their life, but never getting the Word of God taught, are going to wake up and realize, as a Christian, they've been worshiping the devil. And they just, they're so ashamed, they don't even want to face Christ. They love Jesus, and they do not want to face Him because they have been misled, because they didn't read the letter that God sent to them to avoid the deception of the end times. Well, you do not want to be in that condition. That's why they want to die, is their shame. Good people, but misled people. Now, let's talk about the locust army just a little bit. Verse 7, And the shapes of the locusts were likened to horses prepared into battle. Well, you can see they're not locusts. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, seemed to be royalty. And their faces were as the faces of men. Why? Because they are. They are men, liars, deceivers, lieutenants for Satan himself. 
What a shame. Verse 8, and they had hair as the hair of women. They talked so sweet and so gentle. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. You know, a, a canine will bite off a victim and stop the, the flow of blood to take its prey. But a lion teeth rips and tears and utterly destroys the victim. I mean, wh which, what is this saying? It's all right. They talk so sweet. We come in prosperously and peacefully. We just want to be your friend. We want to pay off all your bills. We want to give you everything that you need because we're your buddy. We're, we're, we're going to bring salvation to you. And all the time, your spiritual soul, they're ripping and tearing to pieces. You know, you had a warning way back in the book of Joel about this locust army, and you don't ever want to forget it. And um, we, you, can, you can pick it up, if you would, with um, verse 6 of chapter 1, the great book of Joel, the coming of the locust army. All four categories, that is to say, the locust, the canker worm, and uh, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the nor, and so on, okay? It, what, what it is in the Hebrew is the nor leaves for the swarmer, the swarmer leaves for the de de devourer, and the devourer leaves for the consumer. The four stages of the locust. Are you familiar with it? Verse 6, listen carefully. For a nation shall come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. And he hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. Even the parable of the fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. I mean, they consume everything, rip everything off, rip everybody off. Their teeth tear and rip and plead and take everything you've got that God, that is to say your love for Almighty God, and takes your virginity whereby you are no longer a virgin waiting for a husband. You're in the sack with Satan. Deceived, I'm speaking spiritually now, and stripped clean. I mean, have you ever seen an old tree after a storm or something has injured it and all the bark is gone? It is a pitiful sight. Strip clean bare. That's what they do to you. Take everything you've got, and including your soul, if they can. That's what the locust army does. And take, uh, take um, uh, comfort and look up, because God controls that locust army. He only lets it go so far. <clears throat> you might say, well, it sounds terrible to me. No, think back. What, what did it say back in the fourth verse? You can't bother those that have the seal of God in their forehead. You can talk sweet to them. You can say anything you want. They are not going to be tempted by you. <clears throat> and you cannot bark their tree. You're not going to bother them. So here we have these that claim to be royalty, these crowns, and probably even, the, as, the, as we'll find in the next verse, they, they claim to be priests. Fakes, verse 9, back in the ninth chapter of uh, Revelation. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. Not, not a priest's breastplate. I mean, these are hard. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, of many horses running to battle. Now, our Father let us see in the book of Ezekiel what those horses sound like, that the horses of, of the Bible. And, and they have that transportation. Don't let that throw you either. Ezekiel did a great job in explaining exactly what those were. So never be deceived by them. But they, claiming to be preachers running here and there, and I mean, got the breastplates on, they're wearing crowns like we're straight out of the book. How many people and performing miracles, snapping fingers, lightning coming down from heaven, and the head honcho himself is there, claiming to be God. Do you know something? 
The sad part is how many people know better? How many people would know the difference? It's a little frightening because God's Word is simply not taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse, whereby God's children are not warned sufficiently that there is that there are that remnant, God's elect, that will continue to bring that truth forward. Verse 10, And they had tails like unto scorpions, naturally, and there were stings in their tail, and their power was to hurt men five months. And there you have it, the five-month period, the five-month period of the locust. And it's fair enough for you to know that um, through horticulture and other methods, uh, the, um, the locust, uh, has a five-month cycle where they come into being. They shed their, their um, one skin, which looks like a complete locust. They're gone again, out pilfering for a five-month period. And it happens to be from Passover to Fall Fellowship. That's not just an accident. That's a five-month period. Now let's talk about that just a moment. God had said in through the Son in Mark 13, for the elect's sake I have shortened the time, else there would be no flesh saved. I mean, that, that's how terrific Satan is in deceit as a deceiver. But for the elect's sake I have shortened that time. And here he tells us to what point. That seven and a half year, that seven years rather, <clears throat> two, three and a half year periods, back to back. As, Revel, as uh, Daniel, the great book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27, so declares, when the abomination, the, uh, the abominable one, well, who is the abominable one? A Babdon and Apollyon. You're going to learn his name here in Hebrew and in Greek in just a moment. But uh, when you see that, then know that that has been shortened to a five-month period. We can cut it. Now, you can even, if you would, as the seven-year period was split in two parts, two three-and-a-half-year periods, you can split the five-month period in two-and-a-half periods, two-and-a-half months each. We will talk more about it when we come to the 17th chapter, and um, you will have a better understanding even of why, why that there was silence in heaven for a half hour when we opened the eighth, the seventh seal. So having said that, <clears throat> returning then to, to chapter 9, verse 11, let's go with it, here's your names. And they had a king over them. This is the head honcho, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Now, I, you don't really need any guesses to know who the angel of the bottomless pit, Satan is a cherubim, Ezekiel 28 documenting. And that's who he is, okay. whose name, here you go, going to identify him, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is a babton. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Do you understand that Apollyon is one of Satan's names? A babdon is one of his names. It doesn't fit anyone else. He's a as king. Instead of being king of kings and lord of lords, he's king of the bottomless pit. You do not want to go there. Now, why ever tell me would God give this identifier in two languages? So you couldn't go wrong. So you couldn't be deceived. So you can apply it both to the Old Testament and so you can apply it to the New Testament to identify the destroyer, and he will destroy you if you give him an opportunity. That's what he wants to do. He wants company where he's going. And um, I'm afraid um, that there's a possibility that he's going to have quite a bit of company. Now, <clears throat> we know, and I've covered it once before, how could he possibly deceive that many people? It's, it's written in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 
where Paul was teaching. I read it to you not long ago, but I'm going to cover parts of it again. Where he said, this may sound foolish, but I want to talk to you a moment. I don't want you, I want to present you to Christ as a chaste virgin, not as Eve who was beguiled, expatio in the Greek, wholly seduced by Satan. She was deceived. Super preachers come along and you seem to swallow it hook, line, and sinker. And he said, though I may be crude in speech, I can jerk the rug out from under him any time I choose. And then he brings the truth forward in the 11th verse. You're not going to have it. I'm going to read it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 11. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth I do. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, and wherein they glory, that they may be found even as we. I, I can jerk that rug out from under them any time. That's what he's saying. 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Oh, praise God, did you hear that? Going to transform themselves into angels of light, apostles of light. You know, you've heard preachers say that. But hang on a minute now. 14. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Oh, praise the Lord. People will say. Sometimes we'll teach. Satan himself is going to be saved. You know, there's just one big problem. That's not really what it's saying, and I'll, I'll explain it in a moment. Verse 15. Therefore... It is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. In other words, they're going to hell because this word transformed is disguised. You check it out in your Greek concordance. There is no way it can be translated transformed and be accurate. The word in the Greek means they come disguised disguised as preachers of Christ, but they're false. And even Satan himself comes disguised as an angel of light. Sweet talking thing. Not vicious war, not destruction. The destroyer destroys your soul. And which is more important? your eternal soul or your flesh body to be destroyed. You see, there's, there's a bad, bad thing developing. And it's people lying to our people, people misleading our people, people hitting them for change that they have no, they haven't got a cotton picking idea what kind of change they're talking about. They just want to change. You know, only a fool would wish for a change he didn't know what it was. Because most often, if, the, if it isn't transparent whereby you know you're going worse, not better, somebody is pulling the wool over your eyes. And that's what's happening. This is why he said back in the book of Joel, the nation's coming. <clears throat> and there's a one-world system that's developing itself to kind of take over for those that allow it to take over. But thank God there are still true men and women of God that stand the gap, fix the hedges, and plug up the holes whereby truth is held and God reigns supreme. So, <clears throat> you see, don't let it marvel that God would give you his name in both the Hebrew and the Greek tongue and allow it to be transferred in the English. That's that Old Testament, New Testament. Hebrew, Old Testament, Greek, New Testament. He's still the destroyer, Satan, disguised into thinking for most people that he is Christ. That's why he's called Antichrist, the most dangerous role he will play. It's called instead of Christ in the Greek tongue. And God has just identified him for you told you how long he would be here, 
who he could hurt and who he could not. Praise God, he cannot hurt you because you have the seals of God in your forehead. And God always protects his own. Verse 12 to continue. One woe is past. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Got three of those woe trumps. Verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Not naturally, we know that six is Satan is Satan's number. We know that he appears at the sixth trump, sixth seal, and the sixth vial. That's 666. That's when he comes. That's here is when his power really overflows. 14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Euphrates is always the border between truth and Babel. And he's going to be released, and Babel's going to overflow everywhere, unless you have the truth already instilled in your mind. It comes from God's Word. We're reading it right now. Verse 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay a third part of men. Now, slay them in what way? We thought they were praying for death and they couldn't die spiritually. I mean, if it were one of God's elect, it would be the unpardonable sin. They're trying to steal your soul with false religion, trying to get you to follow the false Messiah. And... You know, this is something you want to take comfort from. Anytime you have four dates under one article, that is to say hour, day, month, and year, to preposition, that means instant. This all has to do with one instant. And only God knows when that is, but we're getting there. So you want to remember that real well, for it will happen. Luke 10, 19 will come to pass at that time. De facto, Satan shall fall to this earth, and he will know he has but a short time. A Babdon, a Pollyon, and boy will he tear up the, the, the soil if he is allowed to. He cannot touch your mind, though. Verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. You couldn't count them. That's our enemy coming. But as we learn in the book of Joel, I mean, it, they don't turn, they don't alter, they come straight on. But God allows it. Well, that sounds a little frightening to me. Why don't you believe God's word? Why would you be frightened when we just read, you can't touch mine elect. You cannot touch those that have the seal of God in their forehead. They're too bright for you. They won't be sucked in by your lies. And we won't. And that's why you must be prepared for that. Otherwise, he can't touch you at all. You have nothing to fear but fear itself. Because God, the living God, has his wing over you. And he has obligations and duties that you're to perform in his name. So that lost, bewildered people can have hope, can have assurance. Because there are a few champions of the people that will make that stand. Verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and jacinths and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. Whoa, 
I mean, that sounds like a vicious, vicious army. Well, it is. Don't ever kid yourself. It, it will be very impressive to the world. Let me say it again. It will be very impressive to those who do not have the seal of God in their forehead. That is to say simply to know better, to know the truth, <clears throat> to have a little common sense about them. Verse 18, by these three was the third part of men killed spiritually by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. What, 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 what? Tell me again, what were those three things? The fire, the smoke, and the brimstone. What, what were they? Have you ever heard anybody blowing smoke? That's all it is. It's people blowing smoke, lies, lying to you, performing miracles. They are supernatural. They have the ability to do that. And a mere mortal little human being without the seal of God in their forehead will be awed by the smoke, the fire, and the brimstone. You see, what is our Heavenly Father as it is written in the last verse of Hebrews chapter 12? God is a consuming fire. They're going to stand in the temple of God claiming to be God. There's just one problem. It's not a cleansing, eternal fire of our Father, consuming that that is evil and loving that that is good, touching and warming the hearts through the Holy Spirit, but an evil smoke, fire, and brimstone, the pits of hell, right out of the abyss, if you follow this group. Now, who does he have working for him? There are also three offices in this. You have the Antichrist, that's Abaddon, Apollyon, one. And you have the locust army, that's Satan's lieutenants. They're very real, very, very real. You might say, well, I don't know where he's going to put that together. Oh, listen, if you had eyes to see, you could look around you today especially in high places, you can see them. They operate in and out, in and out. And last of all, the four demons, the, the, which are angels, but demons, evil spirits. Out of those th groups of three come the fire, smoke, and brimstone. I want you to get pretty good at understanding when somebody's blowing smoke. Well, pray tell me, how could I tell when somebody's blowing smoke? When they're lying to you, telling you something that is biblical and you're wise enough to know it's not in God's Bible. It's not in His Word. Where did it come from? Out of Satan's handbook. Do you want to operate out of Satan's handbook? I don't think so. So again, where does this damage come from? 19, let's understand it. It's simple. A child can understand it. Fire, smoke, and brimstone. Where does it come from? Verse 19, for their power is in their mouth. All smoke, all talk. And in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. They hurt if you give them an opportunity. They're coming disguised as preachers. And they are leading you right to the altar of Satan. And, and let me tell you something. You want to remember back to the church of um, Smyrna in Philadelphia. You know those who are of the synagogue of Satan and claim to be of our brother Judah. You see, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. That's who we're talking about, the Kenites, that are the lieutenants for Satan himself, his own children. Jesus identifying them in St. John chapter 8, verse 44, as his, Satan's offspring. Um, so there you go. The only place that danger comes from them is out of their mouth. Words cannot hurt you. 
As long as you have the seal of God in your forehead and you know you're hearing a lie, deception, and people misleading your own children, friends, and family, neighbors, and citizens, and it's enough to get your hackles up because we do not like to see our own children of God used by the mouth of a false apostle. And you've got a lot of them. Jesus would tell you in Mark 13, hey, don't worry, there's a lot of them in the world right today that claim they come in my name. They claim to be Christian preachers. I didn't send them. Well, how can I, but how can I tell whether it agrees with the Word of God or not? So the, the mouth cannot hurt you. Verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils. Don't know any better. And idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Dumb statues. Making religions out of it. Believing anything. 21 to complete the chapter. Neither repented they of their murderers. That's to say, those that would spiritually deceive someone. Nor of their sorcerers. What is a sorcerer? Well, the word in the Greek is pharmacica, which is a drug peddler. Okay. Druggy. Our word pharmacist comes from it either, a dealer in legal drugs. But there's not going to be any druggy, drug pushers. Make it. They're just not going to make it. That's what sort of, they give you a religion getting you on a high through drugs where it seems to be a religious experience. It's a sorcerer's experience, and God doesn't like it. Nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. You're supposed to remain a virgin for the true Christ, not committing adultery, running around with a false Christ, losing your very salvation because of ignorance of God's Word. That's why the seals are so very important. That's why God's Word is so very important, that when their sweet talk comes along, it's, oh, it sounds so good. As the book of Daniel declares, they come in prosperously and peacefully, not with war, upset, and destruction. It's destroying your soul from their very mouth. Be careful, my friend. You're living in that generation when all these things are going to come to pass. Don't let it be a surprise. God has forewarned us. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? 